Hello everyone, Aries Wrath here, and today we're going to be talking about mining. And this is going to be more of a lesson plan kind of day, where I go through the different types of mining, explain, and that way you can determine whether mining is right for you, and then I'll walk you through on how to set it up. With all that being said, let's get started. So the three different types of mining, you have your CPU, your GPU, and your ASIC mining. CPU mining works really well depending on the generation of CPU that you have. You could adjust the amount of cores that you use, therefore you can still use your computer while it's mining in the background. And the only thing this really affects is your hash rate, which then affects your profitability. The second option is a GPU. Every algorithm is different, so certain GPUs are better on different algorithms and certain miners are better with different types of GPUs uh, given how they adjust them. Uh, but for the most part, your GPUs are going to be way more effective than a CPU. And lastly is an ASIC, or an application-specific integrated circuit. These computers are built and designed specifically for the algorithm that you're mining. And usually they only mine one algorithm. So if it's memory or core heavy, these computers will be specifically designed for them. And it's really good at one single task, but it can't be used for anything other than that one task. All right, now let's start off with CPU mining. CPU mining is pretty cut and dry. If you have a newer CPU, they're gonna be generally more efficient and profitable, anywhere between 80 cents and $2.50 a day. A lot of people have switched to Warthog rigs, which I don't use and I don't CPU mine myself, so I'm not the person to be asking on that, but I do know it is a big thing now, and this gives you something to look up and research during your journey into mining. When it comes to CPU mining, most people just mine XMR. There are other algorithms and other coins to use, or to mine I should say. A lot of people speculate mine with them. This is a good thing to start off in terms of like a basis, and you could research more into the future on what you want to mine and what how you want to use your equipment. And lastly, is there equipment risk? Using a laptop doesn't really provide the best cooling and airflow, so there is a lot of hardware risk when it comes to using a laptop. With a PC, it's a lot less, and a lot of these can be mitigated depending on your cooling system, your airflow. Some people will remove the battery out of their laptop to prevent heat and to provide more airflow. There are a lot of different tips and tricks over the years people have come up with to keep their computers or laptops relatively safe from the heat element of things. But for the most part, in the general population, there is a lot of equipment risk to it. I've actually created this uh, diagram that uh, I used, I made using paint. And it pretty much sums everything up. Uh, if you're using a family PC, don't CPU mine. If you're using a Chromebook, don't CPU mine. If you're using an old computer with an old CPU with internal graphics, don't CPU mine. And this also kind of attaches to Macs. You won't make enough to ever repurchase your MacBook. You're not gonna be making a thousand or $2,000 a day in most cases. Now, obviously there are the rare cases where you will make that much money, but it's not worth the repair or replacement cost of your Mac. Now for GPU mining, is it worth it? And nothing's really changed too much in the last couple years with it. The answer to that is pretty simply yes. Like no matter what equipment you have, it is profitable in about 90% of cases. In the cases where it's not profitable, it usually has to do with your electri electricity prices but in most cases, it will be profitable for you. Most people mine either on the CowPow algorithm or on the EcoHash144 algorithm. Both usually provide the best profits, but there are other cases to where you could mine other coins, and there are different websites and different resources you could use to determine what is best and what is most profitable for you. But just from a baseline setting or standing, CowPow and EcoHash are generally the most profitable. Is there equipment risk? Yes, 100% there is equipment risk. Anytime you run anything electronic 24 seven, as hot as they run, there's going to be risk involved. Now there are ways to mitigate it. That is keeping your thermal temps under 75 degrees Celsius and knowing how to manage your clock speeds in order to mitigate all those, all the damage that could come in the future. But generally it does take time off of them but if done properly, it's really not much time you're taking off of your cards. All right, now time for ASICs. And this is primarily what I mine with. I can go on all day long about them, 
but this is supposed to be a baseline level of information to kind of help you get started on your journey. And are ASICs worth it? And the short answer to that is yes. In pretty much every case, if you're buying the latest and greatest ASIC, it is going to be profitable. Now, some of them are $15,000, some of them are $2,000. Some of them cost $400 electricity to run, some of them cost $50 in electricity to run. And it all depends on your price per kilowatt hour and what is right for you. Now, this does come with risks as they are very specific to one algorithm. If that algorithm dies, for instance, like when XMR forked out of CryptoNight into a new version of CryptoNight, they essentially rendered all ASICs completely useless. They were paperweights. So any money you put into it, poof, gone. Now, some factors to be aware of when it comes to ASICs is these things are loud. If you live in an apartment, your neighbors are going to hate you. They're, they vibrate and they're loud. Luckily, I don't have to hear them because I keep it well insulated, but that is one issue. The other issue is you live if you live in the US, they run off of 240 for the most cases. Now you can buy certain power supplies that do both, but in most cases it is always more efficient to run them off of 240 because you use half the amperage when you do that, allowing you to either run more or to put them on a basic outlet and have them not trip the breaker. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the lesson plan portion of today's video. This was designed to be a baseline level of understanding that way you know what to look up in the future rather than just googling how to mine or what is mining. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comment section below and I'll answer every single person's question or comment. Now for the rest of this video, we're going to be setting up lazy mining by mining Dutch and how to set it up so it's auto converting your coins to whatever coin you choose. Alright ladies and gentlemen, now time for the lazy mining portion of this guide. Lazy mining is made by Dutch pools and it auto converts your currency from one, whichever one you're mining or whichever coins you're mining, to the currency of your choice or currencies of your choice, however you decide to set that up. First, you're gonna to wanna to sign up, verify or confirm your email, and then you're gonna to wanna to go to the get started portion of this website. And feel free to pause it while you go through the sign up portion of it. Uh, it could take a minute or two, but once you're at this getting started portion of the website, you're going to, want to click this T-Rex miner button. And I've selected the Kapow algorithm and you could select whatever is the most profitable for you. Normally people use what to mine to figure that out, but Kapow is pretty much always the most profitable coin for my GPUs. So primarily that's what I would leave it on, but it's completely up to you. So for Kapow, we're going to use the T-Rex miner. We want to go to the T-Rex miner link and download this T-Rex 0268 WinZip file right here. Now it might prompt you that it is a virus. It's not, but you're going to have to go into it and manually allow the download so you could use it. Once you've done that, we can scroll down and make sure that your alg algorithm is set to the one you've chosen. Your region is North America or whatever region you're in. Your device presets are set and it'll auto populate these things. You scroll down and now you have all of the information you're going to need moving forward. Now we're going to go to wherever our file is located. And for me, I just put that on the desktop and you're going to right click the T-Rex folder and you're going to extract that zip folder. All right. Once it's been extracted, you're going to open up your T-Rex folder that you extracted from and you're going to right click new text document. You're going to open up that text document and within that text document, you're going to type out exactly what I have written here with the difference being the URL being the one on Mining Dutch that was given to you. The user should be your user dot whatever your worker name was and the password should be whatever they gave you. When that has been completed, you will go to File, Save As, File Type, All Files, Run, Dot, Back. Yes, I want to replace it. Now I'm going to minimize that and go to the Run file that you just created right here, this Windows Batch file, and run it. It should populate with something like this. As you can see, I've got both my graphics cards that it sees, and it's gonna slowly connect to the pool. 
it's going to fail because it goes through, I believe, all three pools. And eventually, after the third time, it's going to find the pool that you selected. And as you see here, it's exactly what happened. Now it's going to download the DAG file. And you should start mining within one to five minutes. All right. Now that we have successfully started mining, we can now go back to our Mining Dutch profile. We can go to our earnings or our wallets, excuse me. And we can start the lazy mining process. You're going to have to unlock your wallet. It will send you a verification email. You will then click that email and it'll unlock your wallet. This is where you can select any coin you want into any allocation to auto convert the coins you have mined into the coins you want. When that is done, you're going to go to your wallets and you're going to add the wallets for all of the coins that you've selected. As you can see, I've already started mining something. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the guide. If there are any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them in the comments below. I appreciate it. Have a good night.